Hi YouTube friends. So today's video is quite different from the normal. It is a sponsored video. Can't believe I'm saying that. Uh, when I started this channel, I kind of vowed that I would never promote just every little company's product on here that reaches out to me. Um, if I ever was to do this, it would have to be something that I was truly passionate about or it would be something where I reached out to a company and they accepted the sponsorship, which that is what happened here. I actually contacted the pond guy to see if they would consider helping me get our pond healthier. And I'm so excited they agreed to do this. Uh, again, a first time for me. Um, I'm just so excited to see what will happen with it. So if you were to search on Google anything pond related, even your little backyard ponds to you know large ponds like this, I'm pretty sure the first website that would come up is the Pond Guy. I've always been impressed with their products, but I've also been really impressed with their customer service. Anytime I had any little question, they would be very accommodating and kind and answer it. So I would definitely advise you if you have a pond, even just a backyard pond or a large pond like this, and you are looking to get it healthier or have any questions, make sure to contact them. They will help you out. So my husband John is planning on helping me set up the aeration system. Um, we watched some videos on how to do this and it looks like there should be two people involved in doing that. And I plan to probably just do the treatments myself. I'll take you along every step of the way and I'll probably do a voiceover as I go and kind of explain what we're doing. I hope this video will be helpful to some of you who may be looking to clear up your pond. So here is the aerator all nicely packed into this box. Uh, first we removed everything. John dug out a level spot here to set the aerator on. Here John is assembling the contraption that will be put underneath the water and I am so glad he's doing this. Um, he's really good with putting things together like this. I am just the type, I just not patient enough I guess to look off of a piece of paper and put things together and I'd rather just kind of slap it together and hope it works, which probably isn't the best trait to have. For the size of pond we have, we were told that we need two of these. My son is brave enough to row out into the water here and drop these bubblers is what I'll call them. And we should definitely invest in a real boat, like a little rowboat or a pedal boat or something. But for now, this will do. So 
So this next step here, adding pond dye to the water is probably the most scary for me. Uh, you guys know how I am about keeping things you know, natural looking and I have just seen too many weird colored ponds in our area where people just dump a bunch of dye into the water and they turn out this crazy neon aqua color that does not even resemble water and I'm just so afraid that our pond will look like this so I am getting my son to just put a little bit in, maybe just a fourth of a bottle here. The reason for the dye, if I understand it correctly, is to block the sun's rays from you know, penetrating into the water, in turn creating nutrients for the algae to grow. So here I am down by the pond two days after we installed the aeration system. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and add some more of the dye. I'm not really seeing any blue, so I'm kinda confident that I can add a lot more without it looking fake. The next thing I'll be treating here is the algae. That is kind of the greenish slime you see on top of the water here. It says then to wait three days before doing the next step for this pond. So here I am the next day after putting some dye in the pond and I just wanted to show you guys what happened. My worst fear came true here. Check this out. I am so not liking that artificial sea green color. And this is my own fault. I should have just put in half of that quart of dye. Uh, now I wish I would have just done that. but. I guess it's too late now. So here I am three days after applying the pond dye and the algae defense. And I am so impressed guys how this pond is looking already. I mean check it out. I think even the dye is looking better. Maybe it just had not been mixed all the way through. And I do know if the sun shines it does look more green. but. Just the way it looks right now with the sun behind the clouds, I am so impressed. So here is what I will be adding next. And I do want to check my instructions just to make sure I put them in in the right order. So if you are thinking of doing this treatment in your own pond, you just need to follow the, the directions on what size your pond is and how much to add. In this case, I will be pitching in four packs of the Pond Clear and I will be adding four scoops of the EcoBoost. The Ego Boost product here is in, in a powder form, and you mix it with water, and then um, you know distribute it evenly uh, along the shoreline of your pond.
So the last thing I want to apply here for today is the muck away. And there's directions on here that kind of tell me how many scoops I will need for a certain distance. So what I want to do is just kind of distribute it evenly or as evenly as possible. These muck away tablets are actually supposed to take inches of muck away, uh, you know, per month. And I'm so excited about it because we do get a lot of buildup here with the pond being in the woods, you know, with leaves on uh, settling to the bottom. And I'm just excited to see how this will work. Two weeks later after treating the pond, I repeated the process again, and this time I didn't add any pond dye, and I also didn't do the algae treatment. Um, I was in contact with the pond guy, and they told me what I was treating, what I thought was algae, was actually a mixture of algae and pollen. It was almost like a crumbly, I don't know what you would call it, but um, you couldn't even really, you know, rake it off. It would just kind of fall apart, if that makes sense. They told me eventually it will, you know, just sink to the bottom and there's really nothing that can be done for it. The pond guy also sent us this rake, uh, which works, you know, awesome with the float here on it. Um, now I gotta say we have so many leaves here on our pond, it would be hopeless to try to rake them all off. But I just wanted to show you guys kind of how it works. Um, it would definitely work great to, uh, you know, rake off algae or you know other debris uh, from the surface of your pond. And then also, you know, without the float, you could rake the bottom of the pond if you'd want to rake out, you know, some of the debris or muck that is along uh, the shoreline. Just to tell you a little bit about our pond, it is spring fed. Most of the year we have a decent stream of water running into it. Unless it gets really dry and then there's only a trickle, but it's such a good feeling to know that there's always fresh water running into it. Let's look at some before pictures of this pond and then some after. The three main products I used to treat this pond was the Muck Away Pond Clear and Eco Boost, and that is to be applied every two weeks. And I gotta say guys, when I did the third treatment, I noticed as I went around the pond with my pink bucket, uh, you know, dipping water out of the pond to mix with my Eco Boost powder, I noticed that it was actually a little deeper than it was the first time. So I am really convinced we have gotten rid of a couple inches of muck already. I'm so impressed. The pond guy did send a thermometer along too. I didn't get a video of this, but it's a good idea to take the temperature of the water. And if it falls below, I think 60 degrees, um, you don't want to treat it anymore. You want to wait until spring then. We did end up buying a small boat off of Facebook Marketplace. Uh, 
So John thinks we're just going on a little boat ride, but secretly this is my little reenactment of the notebook. I thought I'd throw that in here. So here I am, November 20th, and when we started this pond project back first of September when everything was still nice and green and warm, that was about three months ago. And as you can see behind me, the result after only three months, we are so impressed. I feel like the best thing for this pond was probably just adding the aeration system uh, before, you know, the water just sat there all stagnant. And now we have all these bubbles going and extra oxygen into the water. I'm sure the fish are all smiling. I was always afraid, you know, it would be kind of loud with the hum of the aerator going all the time. It's actually not too bad. Since the aerator is right beside the pavilion, we've already just shut it off when we sat down here. But again, it's not that loud. Sometimes we just leave it running. So everything I used in this video, I will link down below in the description box. Thank you so much, The Pond Guy, for sponsoring this video. I really enjoyed working with you guys. I can definitely say I had a really good experience with my first sponsorship. It was very easy and you always answered all my questions. Thank you for that. I realize this video probably doesn't apply to a lot of you since not everyone has a pond. That's kind of why I stuck it here in between my usual videos. But for those of you that have a pond and are looking to improve it like we were, make sure to check out the Pond Guys website. Thanks to all of you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you're having a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.